Welcome back, everyone, to the park where in the last episode we had the swan ride of our lifetime. We are still missing our boy Callum, which Sam is kind of a weird, weird name. When the Very weird name. Off. Those poor children, the whole world against them, the forest, the birds, the old witch, even their own parents. I used to imagine that Callum and I were the kids in that story. Not mother and son, but brother and sister, hand in hand against the unkind world. We were always hungry, looking for our own house made of candy, looking for the sweetness that could take the pain away. Hunger leads people to desperate, terrible places where the tree branches reach like claws. She took that from a fucking fairy tale? Dude, don't get me wrong, I like fairy tales, but I never really looked at them as life lessons. Maybe I need to? Hello? <laughs> oh, I heard you. I don't know if you heard it like at the speakers down there. It sounded like there was almost like someone kind of whimpering on the other the other side. Mom, stay where you are. Another accident. This place. Hello? Oh, Jesus! Who would do such a thing to a teddy bear? Despite the constant interruptions to work, Atlantic Island Park will be opening on time. The governor is booked to cut the ribbons, so the real question is whether we will have any customers. I'm not truly worried. The customers will come out of simple curiosity. I deduced what was needed from the banned writings of Archie Henderson. Fours? It's astonishing to think that a resonance of positive emotions can be used to fuel such a process. Henderson himself chose to use negative and that caused some of the taint that still lingers in this place. I will not make mistakes. His mistakes. Very soon, I will know if this has been for nothing. Seriously, that poor, poor teddy bear. Callum, where did you go? Ooh. Callum, where did you go? Catch me, Mom. Dude, I can't catch you if you keep running away Callum. from me. Mother Duck said quack, 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 quack. Callum, where did you go? Follow the trail. So don't go off of it, eh? Hey, an octopus! Dude, I, I love those rides. Where are you? Like, I love going to carnivals and fairs and all that. You know what I don't like, though? I can't do roller coasters. I can do spinny things. I can do high things. I can do fast shooting up things. Mom, I just I can't you, do Colin. a roller coaster. This old thing used to make the blood run to my head. It'd make me dizzy. The uh, guy just snapped. Those poor kids. Wait, what? We were waiting for our turn on the ride. Frank, me, and the boys. This fellow in the chipmunk suit is making an ice carving while people took photographs. Lawrence waited to go over to him, but I've always been a bit wary of those suits. They give me the creeps. It's silly. I know. Anyway, the chipmunk man he was carving and picking away at the ice, and at first we thought he was making some animal, like a tiger or a lion. But as more and more ice fell away, when you first... When you, when you first looked, it was like a human face smiling out of an ice block. But the more you looked at it, the more you saw that there was something not quite right about the proportions. Something unnatural that made your heart begin to beat just a bit, little bit faster. Like you were prey, and that thing in the ice was a hunter. But then these teenagers walked up from one of them, made a face, and one of them made a face at the carving, and said something rude to the guy in the chipmunk suit, and then, well, he went berserk. For a few moments, it was chaos. Everyone was running from the guy who had one of the teenagers on the ground, and he was stab, stab, stabbing with the ice pick, and blood was spraying, and people were screaming, and Frank and I had the kids and were dragging them away as fast as we could. And the last thing I saw before Frank dragged me away was the eyeball of one of those poor kids who landed on the ice sculpture, making a horrible creature looking more or less alive. Dude, that's fucking creepy! Oh god, now I feel... Oh, now I feel vulnerable, like... Chad could be anywhere, man! There's so many, like, little... 
hiding places that he could be at. Guys, I don't like chat anymore. I'm not playing anymore, Callum. Right. I can't get on while it's moving. Oh god. Okay, so So how do I do this then? Am I even able Oh, there we go. Who's gonna mad it though? There needs to be- I don't think- is it timed? Why are we even riding these? This game would be amazing in like VR, I think though. Yeah, see this- I don't think this thing is supposed to be going this fast though. Oh god. Okay, even I'm getting a bit dizzy from this. What the fuck was that? It's a it's an evil monkey. Okay, I don't like this though. I'm done out. Oh god. Is this what it's gonna be? We have to like ride every every ride? A an amuse a scary amusement park simulator? Dude, that that chipmunk though. Oh what the fuck? That was really creepy. Dude, I wanna go to the Ferris wheel. Let's go there. The coolest Ferris wheel I think I've ever been on was like the London Eye. Went there with Good and Badge. Oh god, that was so fun. Wait, we can't get over here. Bridge is broken. That sucks. Frustrated by the fact that the plans seem incomplete, I know as well as anybody that the rules of the game can be changed with enough money. But no matter how much money talks, you can't conjure up missing plans from thin air. I've tried contacting the organization who sold me these plans, and they are stonewalling me. Every contact that I had, every meeting place that I have had watched and swept or, or watched are swept bare. I have a sinking feeling that I have been swindled. We've gone ahead with that we with what we could find in the plans, regardless the harvesting machines, the transport mechanisms, etc. I'll probably let Nicholas name them something cute for the day we open the park. They will be rides after all. I wonder what the hell caused this though? Like Seriously. Oh, could we look through one of these? Callum, come back here right now. Oh, I thought oh. I don't know why that one kind of freaked Callum? me out. Treachery hides in thoughts. Treachery that lashes like a whip and scars our insides. The first time I saw Callum, my thoughts betrayed me. I looked down at this wrinkled red balling thing and I thought, is that it? We build our world from expectations, and the world that I had built for Callum was no different. He was so real, so there, and so far from my expectations. And they shattered, and as they fell in pieces, that one treacherous thought became a new foundation. All of the love that we shared, all of the warmth and goodness that followed, built on a single traitorous thought. Oh, we can't go in. Oh, there is a note, though. I thought working in the park for a summer would be a lot of fun, but the end of the season here really drags. There aren't that many tourists around, and so most of the staff spend their days standing around gossiping. And most of that gossip is about Chad. I mean, Steve. See? Even I'm starting to call him Chad, and I went to school with the guy. It's that goddamn suit. In the beginning, it was a laugh. Steve, the local lush as Chad the Chipmunk, child-friendly mascot at Atlantic, at Atlantic Island Park. Lock up your daughters and all of that. But the more he wears that suit, the weirder Steve is getting. At first it was little things, like refusing to change out of the suit at work and taking it home with him every day. But then I saw him at Susie's Diner, still wearing it, and it wasn't even a work day. Some of the staff complained, discreetly, 
to park management about the smell, and I saw him walking and talking with Mr. Winter, the owner, one day. But nothing seems to have changed. The suit still smells like a carcass whenever Steve walks by, and apparently Steve has picked up some new skills since the last time I saw him pick, puking... Is, is that puking up in a gutter? Outside the, the sick oil station? Because he sure as hell can carve a mean ice sculpture. Those shapes he makes in the ice, though, they give me the creeps. Steve came by the booth today, lucky me, and he was just and he just hung around for a while. I couldn't really tell because of the suit, but it seemed like he was just staring at me, sizing me up, eye fucking me, whatever he was doing. I asked him what he wanted and he just stood there, not saying anything. Eventually, I called my supervisor when he came by, Chad, Steve wandered off. My supervisor told me to put everything in writing, so here it is. Also, I quit. I don't want to see that chipmunk suit ever again. Whoa! I don't like it. Where did you go? Fucking Christ. Ah. Oh, that is so creepy. <gasps> Callum, where did you go? Of course I can't. You keep running. Oh, what is this? I'm not playing anymore, Callum. Oh, that's the speakers there. <gasps> bumper cars! Hell yeah! Do I love bumper cars? Easily the best thing ever. Constant crashes and 80s music. Guess it floats someone's boat. Oh, he hell ye! Okay, so let's go over here. Is there. Oh. Hmm. I thought for sure that was going to be the way to, like, power it on. I don't even know if you have to power this on or even if you have to ride it. Mommy needs to see you, Callum. Oh, there is something here. Looks just a wee bit painful, doesn't it? Callum, tell mommy where you are. Don't hide from me, Callum. Come to mommy, Callum. Oh, there is something over here. I didn't ditch you. Callum, is that him over there? Oh no, that's just a pole over there. It's like I thought that it was a head. Callum, examine accident report. Employee's name, Francis Dufresne. Time and date of accident, 25th October, 1976. Job titles and departments, laborers working on the crane, uh, supervisor, whatever. Um, brief description of the accident or incident. During the transport of the bumper cars into the arena, one of the straps attaching the load of the truck came untied, causing a cascade of bumper cars onto Francis, who was standing directly... Who was standing directly the... Who's standing directly the driver? Oh, directing! Fuck, I am completely illiterate and I suck. Uh, Francis was crushed by the weight of the cars. Des uh, describe any work injuries caused. Francis was killed. Supervisor, or wait, did the see a doctor? Wait, did Francis go see a doctor, or did the guy who get crushed see a doctor? Um, Dexter, the truck driver, claims to have. Seen someone on the back of the load undoing the straps. Nobody else reported seeing that. The sheriff has requested that Dexter provide them with urine samples. Uh, what could have done? Double checking of the straps after transit should be mandatory and drug screenings for all drivers. Callum. Ooh! Callum. Oh shit! Oh man, that could have been a lot more scarier, I think. Mommy is coming, Callum. 
The only thing I wish that it did was it's. Uh. The sound of babies crying right now is. I don't like it. Callum, tell mommy where you are. What the fuck? Why is there a baby up here? Or at least the sounds of one. I don't know if there's a baby up here. I've never played this game. It's a matter, it's a of, public matter of public oh. record that I am a failure as a mother. Once, when Callum was very small, I left him asleep in the car while I ran an errand. Don't even remember what it was. When I came back, the sheriff was standing next to the car, watching my boy through the window. I didn't like what I saw in his eyes. Judgment. He wrote me the ticket without saying a word. Just the scratch scratch of his pen on the notepad. When he gave it to me, our eyes met. I know what you're going through. My daughter, Helen, she just gets some help. Help was a bolt of lightning. Help was a thousand volts surging through my veins. Help is agony. I'd rather die. I wanted to scream. I'd rather you pulled your gun and shot me. But instead my mouth said, yes, Sheriff. What a terrible parent. I can't imagine, like, Where I don't know, going? that's weird. I remember seeing a video recently of this, uh, this lady who left her kid in... Stay where you are! In, in the car while they went into, like, Costco, and that was terrifying just because it was, like, the, oh, during the summer, to too. Okay, seriously, where the hell are these stairs? Oh, God, I seriously can't do the crying. Okay, let's see. Stay where you are. Decrease speed. There we go. Oh, are we gonna be able to... Oh, God. Here we go, ride the Ferris wheel. Let's get spooked out. Oh, God. Again, there's nothing we could do. We could like look to the left and right, and I would not feel safe riding this. Look how rusty this machine is. Like no way in hell would I ever even get on this. People come into your life for a reason. Dad used to say that before Mom ran off. After that, he mostly just drank. Things were different for Don and I. When we met, I was sweeping the floor at Susie's diner. He came in with some workers, but he didn't try to flirt or cop a feel like the others. He just ordered a coffee and sat there, watching me. When my shift was over, he offered to walk me home. I don't know how to describe that walk. We talked and laughed and eventually kissed. It felt like love. It felt like a fairy tale. I can't tell you if Callum was made that night or one of the ones that followed. But I think it has to be that night. That one perfect night. Don and I moved in together, but then, well, he died. According to the supervisor, his safety harness failed when he was working on the top of the Ferris wheel. Don was there one moment, and then gone. Sometimes people leave your life for no reason. I was three months pregnant with Callum. Fairy tale fucking over. Don't swear, please. Come on, you have a kid. Or had a kid? I don't know how to feel about that. Okay, so when I when I said I don't know how to feel about that, there's one thing I've noticed is Oh god, maybe not. Seriously, I just want to know who that, that one character is. Alright, let's get off. Oh, there was stairs there! God dang it. Okay. Well, I, I honestly was expecting to get scared up there. I was gonna say, it feels kind of weird because we kind of know when we're gonna get scared. And I was like, 
100 percent totally expecting something to, uh, to happen like i don't know it fall and go fast or something like that for half a second but anyways guys i'm gonna end off this episode here i hope you guys enjoyed it and i shall talk with you guys in the next episode Bye bye